they had now gathered a broad range of evidence. Physical similarities between the Salutrian and Clovis spear points. A similar technique used to make them. And the Cactus Hill point connecting Salutrian and Clovis in time. All added up to a radical and provocative theory that the Salutrians invented the Clovis Point technology, and Ice Age Europeans were amongst America's earliest explorers. Doug Wallace takes a different approach to the mystery of the first Americans. Instead of archaeology, he's using DNA to reveal traces of ancient migrations. Stored in his lab are DNA samples of indigenous people collected from all corners of the globe. DNA is the molecule of our genetic endowment expressed in a code of four letters representing four different chemical bases. Every cell in these samples contains DNA. But Wallace studies a specific kind of DNA, not from the nucleus, which is a random mix of genes from both parents, but from the mitochondria, the cell's energy factories outside the nucleus. This kind of DNA is inherited only from the mother, and is passed intact from generation to generation as lineages diverge. But at a steady and predictable rate, tiny mutations creep like spelling mistakes into specific stretches of DNA. The amount of genetic variation between any two lineages can reveal how far back in time they shared a common ancestor. So what we've been able to do using genetic variation and comparing the genetic variation of aboriginal populations from all the major continents of the world, we've literally been able to reconstruct the history of migration. When Wallace and his team analyzed the mitochondrial DNA of Native Americans, they found four distinctive lineages that he labeled A, B, C, and D. All four turned out to share common ancestors back in Siberia and Northeast Asia. It was the latest report from colleagues of Doug Wallace who were investigating early human migrations. They were puzzling over mitochondrial DNA samples from a Native American tribe called the Ojibwa. And when we studied the mitochondrial DNA of the Ojibwa, we found, as we had anticipated, the four primary lineages, A, B, C, and D. But there was about a quarter of the mitochondrial DNAs that was not A, B, C, and D. There was a fifth source of DNA of mysterious origin. They called it X. And unlike A, B, C, and D, they couldn't find it anywhere in Siberia or Eastern Asia. But it was similar to an uncommon lineage in European populations today. At first, they thought it must be the result of interracial breeding within the last 500 years, sometime after Columbus. We naturally assumed that perhaps there had been European recent mixture with the Ojibwa tribe and that some European women had uh, married into the Ojibwa tribe and contributed their mitochondrial DNAs. But that assumption proved wrong. When they looked at the amount of variation in the X lineage, it pointed to an origin long before Columbus. In fact, to at least 15,000 years ago. It appeared to be evidence of Ice Age Europeans in America. Well, what it says is that a mitochondrial lineage that is predominantly found in Europe somehow got to the Great Lakes region of the Americas 14 to 15,000 years ago. With Clovis I in ruins and the Salutrian theory still hotly contested, now archaeologists must pull together their discoveries into an all-encompassing new theory of the peopling of the Americas.